saw this comment here from uh, Christopher Herndon. He says, beware of Stephen Shutt. He works with the Knights Templar, templarchurch.org. He is on the list of ministers there, and I confronted him on it last fall, and he refused to repent. I re replied here to this. But let's go to this website, um, Templar Church. Welcome to Templar Church. You can go down through this whole thing. It's very, very disgusting to me. Um, let's go to ministers. Zoom in here so you can see it better. Bishop Harry P. Davis. Bishop Harry P. Davis was ordained a minister of, by the East Alabama Conference of Christian Churches and ordained again as a bishop of Templar Church in 2013. He is alumni of Grace Bible School in Wyoming, Michigan, just outside of Grand Rapids, University of South Alabama, and Mobile, Alabama, and Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois. We should never cease to further our education, whether through life experiences or formal education, is a phrase that Bishop, the bishop likes to use as encouragement towards wisdom and empathy in this world and of many situations requiring both. Three missionary visits to Honduras after Hurricane uh, Mitch gave great insight into suffering around the world, in places which never see a reporter, spending time with the homeless in the U.S. open news sites to the plight of innocents who get trapped in situations where there is no escape unless they have champions. Bishop Davis has been in the ministry for over 30 years, mainly pastoring small country churches who lost their minister. Bishop Davis is now retired and able to minister full-time. Locally, he is involved in Freedom Church in Daphne, Alabama. He also enjoys historical writing and research and is now writing his second book, Princes and Pirates of America. I read that specifically for a reason. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I go to a small little country church, you know, and uh, we're just a small little thing. Here's a guy who's a, a member of a Roman Catholic secret society, essentially. Um, the Knights Templar. Just disgusting. Uh, be very careful about these babbling things. Reverend Caesar Johnson is a missionary minister in New York State and is known for his hospitality and heart for winning the lost for our Lord Jesus Christ. He is well respected by all who know him and command, commands a priory of dedicated knights and ladies of New York State. Brother Johnson is ordained with Templar Church. Another one here, Reverend Richard DeFord. Richard DeFord was in music and youth ministry from 1989 to 2001 when he was ordained as a pastor by an ordaining council of churches in the Southern Baptist tradition, Southern Baptist. Interesting. Um, pastor DeFord has served as senior pastor and currently serves as an associate pastor of missions and outreach. Pastor DeFord is active in local, statewide, and national missions. He lives and serves in Missouri with his wife, Amy, and their three children. He also serves as the priory of, on, of the Missouri Priory of His Coming Glory. Okay, they have all these little titles with these Catholic secret societies. While there is no higher calling than that of Pastor Richard, is also the Midwest Regional Chaplain for KTOA. The, I can't think of what that stands for. The Knights Templar, I forget what it means, but serving Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. Stumble on the guys to church there, you know, Southern Baptist type of thing. You wouldn't know that. The guy's a stinking, you know, high ranking uh, Knight Templar. Missionary T. Brian jo Bryant Jones, young guy here. Missionary minister dedicated to spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the world, I'm sure. Reverend Bryant, Reverend Bryant is active in supporting orphanages, widow ministries, and all who cannot defend or protect themselves in this fallen world. Grand Priory of Supreme Military Order of the Jerusalem Temple, respected and honored by all his knights and ladies. Uh, yeah. Another young man here. Reverend Jason Linder got his start as a member on the board of the rectors and field minister for a Wisconsin prison and jail ministry in 2012. He gradu gradually realized that it wasn't his calling to share the gospel to the masses, but rather to use God's word to help people on a one-on-one -on -one or small group basis. Reverend Linder's Christian passions range from apologetics to counseling, from scholarship to pastoral care for the ill. Well, I'm getting ill reading this. I don't want his help. Reverend Timothy W. Waddell. Reverend Waddell studied in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Louisville, Kentucky. He holds a THM. Uh, Reverend Waddell pastored mainly in southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky area. He is a former pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Louisville, Kentucky and St. Paul Anglican Church of Cincinnati, Ohio. 
He is a certified chaplain with Corporate Chaplains of America, served as Army, Army chaplain via the Department of Defense, uh, where he diagnosed PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and TBI in soldiers. Can't think. Traumatic, oh, traumatic brain injury. Excuse me. Um, you know, get into psychology and stuff like that. And there is real damage that's done to soldiers in war. I'm not denying that. But I'm just saying, you know, yeah, Knight Templar, and he's with the Department of Defense and stuff. Yeah. Reverend Waddell is currently serving as a senior as senior pastor of Grace Community Church, Sellersburg, Indiana. He is chaplain for the Scottish Society of Louisville and chaplain for the of the John John Hunt Morgan Camp, also in Louisville, Kentucky. He is also in the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Okay. Look out for the Sons of the Sons of Liberty, the Sons of, you know, whatever else. Uh, a lot of Masonic stuff going on with that. But again, Grace Community Church. You walk in there, he seems he'd probably seem like a very nice, you know, personality and whatever else. Knight Templar. Another secret order of Roman you know, Catholics. Reverend Gilmar Valentin Camargo. Gilmar Valentin Camargo is our missionary minister to Brazil, Torres, RS country, Brazil, member of the Order Templaria, and a member of the Order of Gregarius. Invested Knight Templar and Grand Prior of the Sovereign Military Order of the Temple of Jerusalem, Brazil. He is a former deacon of Holy Orthodox Catholic Apostolic Church and has worked on several humanitarian campaigns. Uh, Reverend Gilmar has also conducted charity work in Brazil in conjunction with the local Catholic Church. Well, at least he's a little bit more openly Catholic. You know, Got to give him that. And the, you know, this whole thing of the uh, you know, so, so, sovereign military order of the Temple of Jerusalem. I mean, what's the deal with the Temple of Jerusalem? Again, if the Jews are totally in control of it, why are the Catholics, you know, you have the Knights of the Equestrian Order or, or like headquartered over there in Jerusalem. There's a whole bunch of Catholic stuff going on in Jerusalem. Why? Because they know that that's where the city of the great king is. The Catholics are in control. Some idiot out there going, the Jews control everything. Please, please. If the Jews were in control of things, you think they let Catholics mess around over Jerusalem? <laughs> Doubt it. Reverend Zach Birdsong. Pastor Zach Birdsong completed his BS of Religion at Liberty University, Jerry Falwell School there, if I'm not mistaken. In 2013, he completed his BS of Theology 13 hours at Ozark Christian College, 2006 to 2007. Pastor Zach was ordained by the Templar Church in 2014. He currently is a youth pastor at the Baptist Children's Home in Arkansas. Baptist Children's Home. Knight Templar. Hmm. Reverend Allen Brooks, Brooks uh, lives in southern Illinois where he is involved in the ministry. Reverend Charles Ray Jones was ordained by Rivers Edge in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Reverend Jones has been an active minister for over 20 years in Georgia and Kansas City areas. He's a retired Navy medic who has won, worn more hats, including police chief, fire chief, paramedic. Again, the, the influence that the Catholic Church has through these secret orders and things. And where are secret orders even authorized in Scripture? And here he is. <sighs> Reverend Stephen Shutt was ordained as a pastor in 2012 within the independent Baptist denomination and currently serves as a Spanish pastor in North Carolina. He's uh, Gail Ripplinger's son-in-law, if you don't know who Stephen Shutt is. I recommended his ministry. I had links to his ministry at kingjamesvideoministries.com. They're not there anymore. Um, I mean, it, it just, it, this breaks my heart. It really does. I, I don't, you know, but it's like, what am I going to do? Ignore this stuff? What do I do? You know, I'm just like, you know, some of the brethren are just turning and going off, and, and I'm going, uh, you know, I, I mean, you're not going to see me coming out and saying, you know, I heard that, you know, Brother So-and-so overate the one day, you know, or something or whatever else. I mean, I, I get Christians writing to me with some problems that, you know, struggling with perversion and struggling with all kinds of stuff. I keep that stuff secret, okay? That's issues with the flesh. But you get stuff like this. I can't be quiet about this. I mean, this is, you know, I, I helped him uh, back in 2011 create their YouTube channel, AV Publications. No longer subscribed there. And, you know, 
I was writing back and forth with Stephen, you know, he wanted to meet me, you know, one time he was going to be preaching in Ohio, and he's like, is there any way you come out and, you know, see me, I'd, I'd really just like to talk to you, sit down, talk to you and stuff, and I was like, oh, wish, you know, wish I could, but I, I couldn't at the time, you know, and it was just like, he just, he was with local church Bible publishers, he was one of their, you know, missionaries or whatever else, and then he just disappeared, and I just, I don't know what in the world is going on here, this just, I mean, this blew my mind. I just thought, oh, man, you got to be kidding me. But he's a Jack Hiles graduate. He went to Hiles Anderson College. Um, and there's a whole lot of stuff that comes out of there. Stephen Anderson came out of there and a whole bunch of other ones. Um, but just, if you think I take any joy and pleasure in seeing this type of stuff, I don't. But you can read the rest of these. Um, another Baptist here. And uh, then one more um, Orthodox of uh, Father Daniel started his church life in a free will Baptist church. Uh, there, Father Daniel taught Sunday school, preached as well as song leading. After this period of his life, he converted to Eastern, Eastern Orthodoxy. Father Daniel considered for a time becoming a monk in an, in an Orthodox monastery, but that is not. Uh, but this was not the Lord's will. Father Daniel is now ordained in the Progressive Episcopal Church, and has a wonderful wife and three beautiful daughters. Father Daniel's uh, ministry is the Priory of St. Cyprian. The main focus of this outreach is exorcism and blessings. <laughs> I might as well read the other one here. Yeah, that, that is right. I did want to see, say this one more thing here. Reverend Jim Lanley. Uh, J Reverend James Lanley has been an IMB uh, missionary to East Asia from July of 2002 until December 2010. While a missionary, Reverend Lanley was a strategy coordinator church planner who engaged three, unre three unreached people groups in three cities of populations over five million. Prior to his missionary service, Reverend, Reverend Landley pastored Greenwood Baptist Church, Greenwood, Florida. He is the oldest of four children and the son of a small business owner and a traditionally Catholic mother. They were Baptist. James holds a BA in theology with a minor in evangelism and preaching from the Baptist College of Florida, Graceville, Florida. He was ordained at Upatoy Baptist Church, Upatoy, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, Georgia. Prior to pastoring, his real-world uh, work experience included various positions in the printing industry, including supervisory responsibilities. He's also had the opportunity to serve as a part of Keith Green's ministry. Keith Green is one of the foundings of modern-day CCM. A lot of people think, oh, he was a great guy and all this other stuff. He said a lot of nice little things, killed in the plane accident way back when. But he was one of the founders of the CCM movement, contemporary Christian music movement. I don't think very much of him, to be quite frank with you. Um, he and his wife, Keitha, lived in, live in Dothan, Alabama, where they are heavily involved in their church's evangelism and discipleship programs. Now, see, again, if it's this easy... For Roman Catholic Knight Templars to infiltrate Baptist circles. Uh, why would you feel safe in these places? And I can tell you, you know, I came out of the movement. I came out of the whole Baptist movement and things like this. I had people coming up to me all the time while in these Baptist churches, and they'd ask me these weird, bizarre, off the wall questions. Uh, hey, brother, you know, I really appreciate your defense of the King James Bible. Um, do you think Third John should be in there? I'd say, yeah. What? Why would you ask me that question? Oh no, no. I was just, I was just curious. You know. I have other brethren report to me. And they say, you know, uh, did you know, brother so and so is saying that you know you're you mean well and all, but you don't understand the manuscript evidence and things like this. And the Alexandrian texts are better, and Vaticanus, Sending Atticus, Alexandrinus, whatever, they're all better. You don't understand it. You're just kind of dumb and. But yet that same person would come to me, oh, brother, I really appreciate your stance for the King James. And exactly how many infiltrators are in these Baptist churches? There's one. One that I knew. One that I recommended his ministry. Married to the daughter of Gail Ripplinger. Even so... Come Lord Jesus. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.